strange, but apart from that, I don't know. All I want is a coffee. It's very hard to get on this show. Never mind. Thank you, Sophia. Here are the letters for tonight. Panel's already in. They're chatting away, getting to know one another. Here we go. He's an idiot. Letter number one. He's an idiot with an obviously huge mental imbalance created by a disconnection to the real world. Who are they talking about? He's just had a sex change. Bruce Jenner, man in his 60s. Second letter tonight. It will be both divisive and scarring for our nation. Really? That's the referendum coming up in 2017 to acknowledge Indigenous in our constitution. We'll see in the last letter tonight. It's gross and utterly unhygienic. It's not what you think it is. She's only talking about beards. She doesn't like beards. Her husband's grown a beard. She wants him to get rid of a beard. Uh, it's not that bad, really, is it? I've had a few beards. All these letters, sweet and sour. The panellists, 20 seconds. See you then. Bye. Coffee? Got a problem, big or small? Would a miracle be nice? Our monthly crew is back, churning out advice. You might even laugh a bit in the following half hour. Park your backside on the couch, cause baby, it's time for Sweet and Sour. Right here on Sweet and Sour. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Sweet and Sour. Gary Mitchell with you for the next half hour and a terrific lot of guests into the studio tonight to answer your questions. First up, the Prince of Flesh is here. Hello, Vincenzo. Hey, Carlo, how are you? Hey, not too bad, mate. <laughs> very nice hat. Bello. Thank you very much. Very I thought nice. I'd put on my best for you. You did. <laughs> <laughs> Who picked that one for you? Uh, the missus. The missus? Oh, yeah, she picks all my hats. All, all 37 of them. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Terrific to have you, mate. Thank you very much. Love coming on. You know that. Oh, of course. Great to have you. Leah? Yes, Gary. Second time into second the studio. Time, yes. Sweet and sour. Yes. Here I am. Do you enjoy it last time? I did, I did. And then all the friends watched. Good, oh, good feedback, so I hope. You have to do the dishes after tonight's show. That's the difference. <laughs> Second <laughs> time on, you do the dishes. That's it. Part, part, of, the, of, the part of the team now. Part of the furniture. Good to have you. Hello, Miss Anita. Hello, Mitch. Who are you teaching how to dance lately? Any celebrities? No, no. Okay. Really. Well, Vincenzo and I are lining up. Vincen Vincenzo, do you know how to dance well? No. Well, well, there you go. Neither do I. But still cap, still cap shoes. I'll dance with you. <laughs> <laughs> Good to have you here, hun. It's always great to be back. Bid, first time we're on the show. Yes, thank you. It's Movie actor extraordinaire, it's only, sir. It's only taken 17 seasons, Mitch. I wait by the phone every Friday <laughs> night. Finally, I get the call. Thank you. Well, you know, we've got a long list of people no. to get through. We finally got there. Mm. So you were 22 when you started writing the <laughs> I was. I was. Thank Good you. Good to have you. What movie are you in? Greenfield. When does it start? Greenfield, 25th of well, this Thursday. Fantastic. Mm. Good to have you. We'll chat a little bit more about it when we come in segment two. Here we go. First lot of letters. Letter number one. Hello, Mitch and panellists. Oh, please. Bruce Jenner, a man in his 60s after having an, a hugely successful athletic business and, if you like, marriage career, goes and swaps his manhood for female bits. He's an idiot with an obviously huge mental imbalance created by a disconnection to the real world. Too much money, too much celebrity, too little grasp on the things that matter. He doesn't have a chromosomal issue. Issue is just a nutcase. Seriously, the only people who should have a gender reassignment are those unfortunate enough to have an extra chromosome. The rest, including Jenna, are self-indulgent, deluded fools. It's not going to help him at all. Wherever he goes, he'll always be there. People who are trying to escape themselves and their circumstances are simply looking for a way to not face the realities of their own life. Similarly, those who move cities to find better friends or social circumstances fail to understand their own failings. Fail to understand their own failings. Terrific. Jenna would have, would have been able to do this prior, would not have been able to do this prior to 50 years ago, and not a soul uh, considers, could consider this a real option in their life's past pre previously. Never. And now it's just a joke. The privilege they're playing on themselves. It's a joke and a waste of medical resources that could have been applied to those in real need of gender reassignment. The big question is, how do we stop our kids thinking this is how life's problems are solved? This is the real issue. Celebrity culture creates the perception of normality for pathetic life options. How do we counter this perception for our coming generation? Lila of Sterling in WA. Vincenzo, how do you hey. stop the kids thinking this is the way to solve their problems? 
I'll go and throw some wanna, money at it. I, I want to go back a step. Lila of Sterling, South Australia, not oh, well, WA. There you go. There you go. I'm, I'm glad she doesn't live here. Lila, I am, <laughs> I, I am very sad. I am very sad that you live your life through the magazines. But let me tell you a truth. This fella going down this path and being so public about it, has probably saved a few thousand people from committing suicide. It is wonderful that he is willing to come out and bring it onto the table that you should follow your heart eventually because there's so many people that just hide and don't want the world to know how they truly are on the inside. I think he's done a good job for saving many lives. That's yep, my yep. opinion. I was going to commit suicide while Bruce was still a man. Yep, yep. <laughs> Leah, I what's going on here? I entirely agree with you. I think oh, that's boring just... show entirely. Oh, uh, I know. No, no. Look, you can't. You yes, can't you can. judge. No, no. You can't judge unless you walked in this man's shoes. Yeah, and I think that. Um, well, I. To, be, to start with, I don't follow. Um, the Kardashians. Celebrity. Oh, not at all. All that celebrity reality TV is banned in our house and I just don't follow it. I think it is, it's, it's not healthy to watch. However, this particular gentleman, I understand, uh, has had these issues going back 40 years or so. So it's not like something he's taken on lightly. But your question was, what about the kids? Well, may I suggest to you that you actually communicate with your children. I, said, um, I think that if you let your children follow all this on TV, you need to make sure that they are understanding of the issue that this gentleman has, make them tolerant to it, unlike yourself, and not to judge. It's just, it's just that's how you need to teach your children. He spent a fortune because he could. If he didn't have the money, he'd have to cope. <clears throat> I think if he was in, in a normal way. family, um, he'd be a normal person right oh. now. I think it's the um, Kardashians that have actually messed him up. And um, <laughs> poor guy, I don't blame him for wanting to change his identity yeah, after marrying it. somebody like Chris. Living with them. Living <laughs> to deal with what right. they've dealt with. It's a crazy the right circumstances, house the right and he's got the money mind. and he's like, get me out. Gosh. Ben, <laughs> ever had the urge to change your kids? Not recently, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm confused, Lila. Um, you say Bruce has too little grasp of the things that matter. I think you missed the point. As I understand it, uh, Bruce, who's now Caitlin, uh, no longer has one of the things that matter and therefore probably couldn't grasp it. Um, and I'm with the rest of the, the panel. Um, no one talked about gender reassignment 50 years ago, but how on earth do we know whether they, they felt about it. I think it's a, it's a great tribute that we can now talk about it and perhaps that's why Bruce has come to this, Bruce, Caitlin, Braitlin, has come to this conclusion in his 60s. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I agree with you about vapid uh, celebrity. We've got to, um, we've got to emphasise values and judgement, but we've got to live them and breathe them, not just read about them in the magazine. Well, there you go, Lila of Sterling. Not one of the panellists think that there's anything wrong with what he's doing. So, we're going on to our next letter. After the break, we're going to be talking about the Indigenous referendum that's coming up. It's not an Indigenous referendum, it's a, it's a piece that we're putting into the Constitution if it gets through to acknowledge the Indigenous and all the other people as well. We'll see you then. Don't go away. See you soon. Welcome back to Sweet and Sour. Now, for every one of our lettered writers tonight, we're going to send them to a very special movie called Greenfield. And one of our panellists starred in it. Didn't you, Bib? Ish. Ish. Oh, Ish. I, Go on, tell us about it. I am the father of the two leads. And the two leads are Megan Seth, uh, Martin Snorris' daughter, Robic. Um, Liam Graham, Ethan Thomas, all nominated for WA Screen Awards. It's a fantastic show. Gritty, made here in WA. Gritty, powerful, made right here in Meriden and Surrounds. Gritty, powerful, great storytelling with a European twist. It's about families, tribal loyalties, the things that pull us together, the things that rip us apart. It's a ripper. Have we got any footage? We do. Can we have a look at the footage? What are we going to see now? We're going to see Butte stuff. <laughs> All right, let's have a look at Butte stuff. Okay, here we go, Greenfield.
Hey. Hey. What are you doing here? Oh, uh, this is Alex. James, nice to meet you. You came. Stay away from those guys if I was you. You're Michael. Kelly's brother. Why don't you fucking listen? Hey, I know. Hey, what is this? Why are you kissing Michael in that photo? Who the fuck took this? So she's it. Uh, yeah, she's it. It's not such a bad place. Have you ever lost someone? Yeah. Brother. I recognised the head and the voice on that last bit of dialogue as well then. Very nice. Yeah, yes, he says. Here we go. That's Greenfield. Starting June 25th. 25th. This, and we're this sending Thursday. all of our letter writers to Three. the premiere. Three tickets. Fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you, sir. Excellent. Dear Sweet and Sour, Adam Good's well-intentioned but misinterpreted war dance during a footy match clearly demonstrates to me how sensitive we are to Indigenous issues and matters of racial difference. For me, it means that it's a very dangerous path on which our nation travels when we have a much discussed and promoted referendum on Indigenous inclusion in our constitution poised for 2017. It will be both divisive and scarring for our nation. It's far too early to consider this move. What will this say about us as a nation if we fail this vote? What will be the consequence of leaving a permanent scar on our social historical record if we fail our past and future generations by cementing the racial divide. The simple act of an indigenous traditional war dance instantly inflamed the media and the community, and we're supposed to all sit around singing Kumbaya within two years. It's sheer dangerous lunacy. How do we stop our politicians playing wedge politics with this incredibly sensitive social issue for no other reason than primitive political motivations coming to us from Jacinta of Mount Pleasant? And we're going straight to Anita on that one. What do you reckon will happen there? We've got, oh. a, we've got a referendum coming up in two years. Yeah, it's not, it's, it needs to be sooner. I think we need to be educated as well, though. Like, this is the reason why so many people um, acted negatively towards um, Adam Goods's dance, is because they didn't understand what he was doing. If they had a little bit of understanding of exactly what the background was, then what he did was absolutely amazing. It was amazing for, for Australian sport, it was amazing for Australia, and it was actually a tribute to the Boomerangs, which is a indigenous program for indigenous kids run by the AFL, and all of those kids out there would have watched that and been absolutely wrapped. So the fact that he got all this negative backlash from people are just from people that just have no idea about what it is and we need to educate ourselves um, to understand what Indigenous culture is and we need to get involved. What do we need to, what do we need to learn about coming together? I mean, it's a fairly basic concept, isn't it? Why would, what chance do you think this referendum have got, has got bid? I, I think it's got a very good chance. But you know what? Um, sunlight is always the best disinfectant. So I say bring it on. I think 2017, we're still talking, are we seriously still talking about this in 2017? Um, you know, you ask what will it say about us 
if this fails, well, it'll say what it says. It'll say what it says about us, and we've got to face up to that. Can we afford the, to let it to let it fail, though? Um, it, it, it... I don't think it'll be a failure. It'll be an opportunity to face um, intractable racism in the eye, and, and maybe we need to do that. And I, look, my view is it'll fail if it is about highlighting a particular race, but if it's about including everybody and our Indigenous people are finally getting some sort of recognition. It is about everybody then for the first time. Mm -hmm. And that's one reason that I think it'll get across the line, because nobody will be left out. Can I, can I also say that, how do we, how do we stop politicians uh, making terrible, uh, uh, terrible decisions, uh, turning these into wedges? Is we elect better ones. I mean, we elect that's them. We're their, we're their right. bosses. Uh, we get the governments that we deserve. And um, I'm, I'm with Groucho Marx, who said the last person to enter politics with honest intent was Guy Fawkes. <laughs> so, and, and the Adam Goods question, are we, serious, are we seriously so fragile as a nation that a mime, a man pretending to, th pretending to throw a pretend stick, is what we're still talking about three weeks later? I mean, get a grip. I, I like, I liked it. I thought it was like the Australian version of the Hucker, which the New Zealanders embrace it's, and, and, and everyone loves it. It's, it's a great thing that what Adam did. I thought I really enjoyed it. I thought it was uh, well. Let's let's move on to the <laughs> onto the constitution. Basically, I think Anita nailed it. A lot of people don't actually understand what the constitution says and what the uh, referendum wants to, to change. <clears throat> and so, basically, I think uh, what you're saying here is a very dangerous path. It's a necessary one. You think it's divisive and scarring. I think that um, there is already a 200 years of scarring and divide that has occurred and what this is happening it's it's bringing us together this is what the government's trying to do it's not trying to put a wedge there it's trying to bring the bridge together so, well done yeah. vincenzo last word on this quickly jacinta sorry darling <laughs> adam i hope you keep dancing every time you can it is the greatest thing for this country Every other nationality in Australia has been included. It's no wonder the government has to step in and make sure we do the right thing. And I think Australia is ready to wake up to their responsibility to our Indigenous friends. Go for it! <laughs> there you go. When we come back, we're changing the subject entirely and we're talking about facial fuzz, beards, and whether we like them or not. Don't go away. More of Sweet Sam. <laughs> and Or if you'd like to send us a letter, send it to the address that's about to appear. There it is. It is appearing on your screen right now. It's letters at sweetandsour.net.au. You can look us up at sweetandsour.net.au. You can like us on Facebook. You can tweet us. And you can even Instagram us where you'll see some photos. There it is, at Sweet and Sour TV. And you'll see some backstage photos. And for everyone that does write in tonight, we're going to send you to the movies. Courtesy of Natalie Cameron and NRC Communications and the movie we're sending you to this week is... Greenfield. <laughs> it is, and also Spy. And also That's, spy. That's right, there you go. Uh, hi, sweet and sour guests. I'm a hygiene nutter. There's so much I won't go near because it's simply filthy. The Romans were the first to work out that lice and other nasties lived on and in human hair. And so they got rid of it. They cut hair short and created the culture of shaving. They did so initially as they recognised the positive effects minimal hair had on Roman society's overall health. It also then became one of the symbols of sophisticated Rome. Today we are heading back to the full beard. It's disgusting. In an age where we are denuding our bodies, especially in those areas unseen to public eyes, we're at the same time now trending again to the full facial fuzz. It's gross and utterly unhygienic. So how now do I convince my stubborn husband of four years that he needs to get rid of this fungus featuring around his entire, the entire breadth of his head? Yes, yes, I've already withheld sex for the past three weeks, but he's one of those macho characters who must win any issue at all costs. I think the more I nag, the stronger his resolve to keep the fuzz. I'm really at a tactical loss. And the whole phenomenon is multiplying. My son, from a previous marriage, is growing one too, as is my brother. They look dirty and in truth are dirty, no matter how much they insist they scrub them. Please tell me 
What works to change the minds of men in two years, our whole male society may potentially look like an unruly and unsophist unsophisticated gang of stinky recalcitrant bikies. And we'll have a flea, tick and lice epidemic and it comes to us from Anne of Carlisle in WA. Straight up to you, Leah. Do you like beards? I love beards. You love beards. I do. I'm a beard fan. Oh. Although I don't like Stinky? the Dumbledore, you know, Ned oh, Kelly look. Long no, bit. no, it has to be nicely trimmed and, and cut. And but to just firstly say you're a hygiene nutter. It's not good to be a hygiene nutter. Germs are actually quite good, and a beard actually keeps the whole microbe community in balance. <laughs> Believe it or not. On your face. There are benefits to having a beard. Name can, one. Well, you can, it uh, blocks the sun, so it's a sunblock. I like keeps sun you, on my face. Keeps your neck warm if you have a sore throat. When, when was the last time you had a beard? Uh, well, no, <laughs> I, I don't have it. I use a hat. Uh, it also stops skin rashes. Um, and also, I read somewhere that it helped uh, with asthma. It stops the pollen from going oh, in. Oh, you know? so written by something. some bloke with a stinky beard. No, but I... I, I Agree that the long beard is probably a bit thing, but just remember, it's a fad. It was in in the 70s, it went out, it's just come in, it will go out. So I, I don't believe you should be withholding sex from your husband. I think that you should let him win, have sex with your You're husband, the issues, stop honey. nagging and he'll get over it. Let yeah, him yeah. think that he's won and he'll get over it faster. And he's mixing issues. Moving on. Vincenzo, do you like beards? I like them on other people. <laughs> <laughs> And I feel sorry for you because you mentioned the Romans. Of course, yeah. they brought in all of that. But guess what? They brought in the Roman baths too. they just really hygienic. They wash a lot. Maybe you can force your husband and your sons to wash a lot. If you really <laughs> want to teach them a lesson, Bottom grow side. a beard yourself <laughs> and see how quickly they stop. Oh, go for it. There you go. Beard. And you I, a beard man? I, you are. Look, look. look I... I hear you. I am look. I am so far into this. I'm like a, a hot chip. How on, long have you on, had a beard? On, I'll tell you in just a sec. <laughs> I, I am leading the. You, well, you think you're leading the charge. I've been leading the charge since I was 20. My hair's been falling wow. out. I'm almost there. I'm nearly 63, and it's nearly gone. So I'm way ahead of you, Anne. Um, about the beard, I apologise. It's for a film role. It's gone as soon as that. Oh. And thank you so much. Thank you so much, Anne, for giving me a new story to tell because I thought I was just a sad, bald old geezer. Now it turns out I'm leading some sort of health revolution. I'm hygienically getting rid of <laughs> fleas and ticks and lice and other things. And on top of that, I've got a better chance of having sex with my wife. <laughs> it's fantastic. So, Deandra, seriously, this is the way you, ne you negotiate your marriage. You, you call it tactical loss. You threaten your hubby uh, is macho. I mean, I think you've got a few more serious issues than facial hair and stuff. <laughs> Anita, do you like beards? I actually do like a beard. Uh, trim. I've just come back trim. from the Hair Expo in Sydney and they also incorporated Barber of the Year and it is more and more popular if it's trimmed and what they can do and the, the, the finalists, the hairdresser of the year, the top five, five finalists were all male, all with beards, all really nicely trimmed and barbers, the whole thing of a man going into a barber shop, getting trimmed, getting groomed is all coming back in. So, it's so we're going to be really sitting clean. in those big chairs that they yeah, used to pump up. Yeah, it's all oh, coming back. Terrific. Mm. Yeah. Well, I love so, being And then spoiled. it will go out of fashion. That's why women have been doing it for years and years and years. You just go in, you spend an hour and a half there yeah. and you... Well, Getting groomed. If you're Not liking. all like groomed. really long, yeah. but like trimmed and nice. Just being pampered. Like kids. The pub's mm. out, Beautiful. the barbershop is in. The barbershop is in. Can you get exactly. drinks at the barbershop? They're probably. Do you like this letter <laughs> to give away the pair of limited edition sunnies courtesy of a long dream? Letter two. You like letter two? Who's letter two? Adam Goods. Jacinta, oh, Adam you. Goods. You like Adam Goods too? Bid likes Adam Goods? I, well, I only because this letter has actually enlightened all of us and brought attention to what we Beards? Can... No. Adam Goods. <laughs> Adam Goods. Okay, all right. No, all right. Adam yeah, Goods. Yeah. Adam I think Goods. it's, yeah, Vincenzo, definitely. Vincenzo, doesn't matter what you say, mate. It's three votes against. Jacinta, when you get the glasses, could you please send them to Adam Goods? <laughs> <laughs> Coming out to Jacinta of Mount Pleasant in WA, a pair of limited edition Sundays, courtesy of Alan Treves. Alan Treves, who's been with us for a long, long, long time to go. Uh, and will be with us for a long time. Yeah, goodness me, I'm tired. I need another coffee. Vinny, we've got to go. Thank you, Vincenzo. Arrivederci. Arrivederci. Thank you, Leah. Thanks for having me. Did you have fun tonight? I did. Anita, did you have fun? I always have great Where are you going? The airport? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> who, who are you picking up? 
Bib, thank good to have you here, mate. Thank you very Terrific. much. Love it. Thank we'll you. See you in Greenfield. Yeah. All right, we got to go. Say good night to everybody. So good night, good Australia. Night thanks for having us, and thanks Bye. to our terrific crew. Good night, everybody. Good night. Bye bye. Good night. And the bits on the bottom.